Okay, I'm just going to record this, uh, but this I think will allow people to get a little flavor for each of the posters and make good decisions about which posters to go and see. I hope you want to go and see all of them. So I have breakout rooms ready to go. I will show the videos in the order in which the breakout rooms are listed, starting with the University of Bridgeport. The audio on this might be a little bit low. Listen carefully. Hi, my name is Hui Hung, and my poster is about the University of Bridgeport's High Altitude Robotic Monkey. HAM, an acronym for High Altitude Monkey, was named in tribute to Ham the Chimpanzee, who flew prior to Alan Shepard's Freedom 7 Mercury mission. Our HAM took his first flight back in 2019 from the Discovery Museum in Bridgeport, Connecticut, as part of the NASA Undergraduate Student Instrument Project, reaching nearly 11,000 feet in altitude and transmitted live footage and data down to a local science museum. For April 2024, our team plans to launch HAM from Junction, Texas as part of our outreach program to interact with local students in grades five through eight. HAM serves as a medium to young students to showcase real life STEM applications and an introduction to the science behind high altitude ballooning. Okay, super. Here's the next uh, promo video. This is about antenna positioning. Hello, everyone. This is a poster presentation from the uh, um, three students and myself at Fond du Lac Tribal and Community College in Cloquet, Minnesota. We went to Socorro in October and we had some issues initializing radio signs and getting good GPS, you know, connections. So we thought we'd analyze the signal strength that the satellites were getting, or were giving the radio sign to see if you could see any difference between our three different setups and where they were related to buildings that might have obstructed things. And we tried it in two different ways. Um, the idea that I came up with didn't pan out. So then Aurora took over and tried it in a different way. I was able to analyze the signal strength from all of the different different locations from our groups, and that was able to show benefits. Uh, hopefully that will pan out as we look further into this over the next few months. Yep, and I, this is just a preliminary thing. It's not done yet, but uh, we've learned a few things. So we hope to show that to whoever's interested. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. This is. Okay, here's our next uh, poster, which will be about pixie camera solar tracking. Hi, my name is Yoel Maklub, and my slide is about using a pixie 2 robot vision camera for sun tracking and camera pointing on stratospheric balloon flights. The Pixie 2 camera is a tracking camera that identifies objects using their color, but is also incapable of recording videos. Our team is creating a payload that can use Pixie 2 to help other cameras like a GoPro and Raspberry Pi camera to always be recording the sun or an eclipse during a balloon flight. The payload will include filter reels and may include an occulting disc to create a synthetic eclipse. Flying a payload like this during an actual eclipse can provide evidence that it's possible to study the solar corona from any balloon flight that gets above the Rayleigh scattering of the sky and can reliably point a camera and a culting disk at the sun. Thank you. Hi, my name is... Okay, and then we have a poster on soft skills from Casper College. So our poster is on soft skills that come with the Nationwide Eclipse Blending Project. I'm Lily Trujillo. And I'm Ashlyn Sunking. And we're representing Casper College, Kelly Walsh High School, and Natrona County High School. We're team-wise. Some of the skills that come with any BP are communication, problem solving, organization, time management, creativity, critical thinking, and teamwork. These skills are very helpful for adding to your resume and building a good relationship with you in the workplace. It will help a lot with different types of workplaces, and it is very vital skills just for working with the team. So thank you. 
Okay, and one more. This is some gravity wave analysis. And this is not from the atmospheric sciences side. Hi, I'm Bryce and I'm from the Montana State University's team. This poster gives an overview of our methods of detecting and analyzing atmospheric gravity waves using GPS data and the results of this analysis applied to the 2023 eclipse last fall. Briefly, we use a Fourier analysis to check if gravity waves may plausibly exist in the data and a holograph analysis to identify exact waves. During the eclipse last fall, with these methods, we found at least two potential waves occurring at altitudes of about 10 kilometers and 24 kilometers. Finally, data from these two flights agreed in these results, suggesting we are indeed capable of detecting potential gravity waves with GPS data during eclipse flights in advance of the one this spring.